Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on Court TV News on the R. I am Ebulomo Adekunle. Stakeholders in the advertising profession have come together in Abuja for an international seminar on political advertising, perception building and voter education to ensure that the right messages get to the electorate through advertorials and campaign jingles. Details in our subsequent bulletins. The Senate has unanimously turned down a recommendation for the removal of fuel subsidy. This was one of the recommendations by the Senate Committee on Finance, which investigated the alleged unremitted $49.8 billion oil fund. After extensive debate on the report, the Senate adopted 21 out of the 22 recommendations. The only one turned down was that made by the committee on the need for oil subsidy removal in the country as a way of stamping out corrupt practices in the sector. But the Senate rejected it on the grounds that it was not in line with the position of the Nigerian masses. Senate President David Mack maintained that it would be wrong for senators to pitch themselves against public opinion. Protesting pensioners have blocked the main gates into the National Assembly complex in Abuja. They are seeking a 53% upward review of their pension in line with an agreement the claim they have with the authorities. The senior citizens had planned to march into the complex to seek lawmakers' intervention, but security personnel denied them access and they decided to block the gates of the legislative complex for several hours. They came from far and wide, armed with placards conveying their plight. They sought to voice their frustrations to federal lawmakers, but security personnel stopped them at the gate. Not to be deterred, the senior citizens blocked the main entrance to the legislative complex. Olonru Tola Tale is one of the protesting senior citizens. So we are here for our 53.4%. If we are, They have promised us since that they will implement it, but we've not seen anything. So when some of our members, when they called me yesterday, so I just have to leave whatever I'm doing and come. The pensioners insisted they were at the complex on invitation to draw attention to several unfulfilled promises. Because we have series of problems, uh, accumulated pensions that had not been paid, non-implementation of pension increases, and uh, harmonization and what have you. So we have written in details all that we, 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 uh, the government owes us. So the issue now is that we are going to listen. The pensioners' grievances include non-payment of 5% counterpart funds to local government pension boards across the country. They insist this will ensure prompt payment of retirement benefits approved for local government pensioners and retired primary school teachers. The State Security Service has paraded members of a gang that kidnapped President Goodluck Jonathan's uncle. The agency says a 400-level undergraduate, Eldra Jenner, is the leader of the gang that also included a native doctor. But the alleged gang leader claimed he only carried out surveillance and provided funds for the operation. The report. Go forward. Go forward to them. Uh -huh. Stand there. These are the men arrested over the abduction of the president's uncle in February last year. The man was released after 17 days in captivity after a number of arrests were made. Security forces say the abduction was executed by these undergraduates of the University of Jos. Eldred Magnus Jonah. Jonah masterminded the kidnap of Chief Inengite and provided the takeoff grants of 40,000 Naira for arms procurement and other logistics. He confessed to the following that he carried out surveillance on the victim, that his, his, the gang had two teams for the operation. The land team made up of five persons, and the water side, that is the speedboat team, made up of three persons as an undergraduate. The 30-year-old undergraduate denied that he was the brain behind the crime, but admitted funding the operation. <laughs> Mr. Sebastian and uh, one uh, 
A native doctor also explained his involvement in the abduction of President Jonathan's uncle. What can you do? What service did they ask for? What did they say you should do for them? Okay, when they came, so that evening, because it was night, when they came to my place, I, I did not know them. Only this uh, forever I knew. Because he was my patient. So, he brought to come a major player in the abduction is one Sebastian, whose name was mentioned by the suspect. When asked about his whereabouts, the SSS spokesperson simply said, investigations are still on. She, however, said the men will soon be taken to court. As a result of poor performance by the All Progressives Congress in the just concluded Ekiti governorship election and allegations of rigging leveled on the People's Democratic Party, the leadership of the All Progressives Congress are engaged in a soul searching exercise to stem the tide of the PDP winning spree and ensure victory in the August 9 election in Ocean State. Rashid Rashid was there and filed in this report. The meeting, which is said to be another step by the All Progressives Congress leadership in appraising the state of affairs in the party and to position it well for the future challenges in the country. Though most of the participants declined to disclose the details of the meeting, the Deputy Vice Chairman South and former Governor Shegun says the August 9 election will be a different ball game. We are going to do everything to ensure that we get an election that will be credible, that will be free and fair, and nobody should take us for granted this time around. We have seen what happened in Ekiti. We are going to prevent that. That's already an impact. Going further, Oni says it is clear that the Ekiti election was rigged, but the All Progressive Congress is ready to challenge the election in court, stressing that Fayemi has decided also to go to court. He has always been in tandem with the party leadership. There has never been any shade of disagreement. The governor said, if this is indeed the will of the people, he did not say that whether it is the will of the people or not. And we have discovered that that is not the will of the people. Therefore, you should expect that naturally and normally, we will go to court to defend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and to ensure that it will be absolutely done in the best of uh, professional ethics. Senator Chris Ngige and Shegwoni say the August 9th governorship election in Oshun will be a shift from the AKT experience. Oshun is a different ball game, and I know you know it. Oshun is our territory. It's an AP, AP, APC uh, stronghold, and um, the people are APC through and through. Let us be very, very factual. Let us be very, very clear. What we have seen in Ekiti is, uh, is a new dimension to voting. It's a new dimension to election rigging. And I can tell you, we have seen it, we have studied it, and we can say for sure that nobody will fool Nigerian voters again. As the APC continue its soul session, occasioned by its defeat in Ekiti, the days leading to the Oshun State Governorship election appear set to bring more drama. Rashid Rashid, Core TV News, Oshobo. Meanwhile, the national leadership of the People's Democratic Party says it is aware of the reason the opposition political party, the All Progressives Congress, is angry. The anger of the APC, according to the PDP, was as a result of the defeat suffered during the recently concluded Ekiti governorship election. The party says it is also planning to defeat the APC during the August 9 governorship election in Ocean State, in a statement issued by its National Publicity Secretary, Olisa Metu in Abuja. Metu was reacting to a statement issued by the APC in which it accused President Goodluck Jonathan of impunity and failure. 
The opposition party accused the president of adding hands in the crisis, rocking states like Adamawa, Edo and others, where the governors there are currently having running battles with the members of the state houses of assembly. Mitsu added that no doubt the APC is afraid and bitter that its prematurely celebrated electoral fortunes and vaunted popularity to win the 2015 elections are gradually being smashed to its face as mere illusion. Following the death of a prominent lawyer, Bamidili Aturu, Colleagues, friends and human rights activists continue to pay their condolences. They described late Aturu as a man committed to representing the oppressed and marginalized in the society. Olaju Mokyolatunji was at his residence and brought back this report. The Nigerian Bar Association and some human rights groups mourned the death of one of Nigerian's prominent lawyers and human rights activists, Yamidili Aturu. Aturu studied law at the University of Ife and devoted much of his legal practice to representing the marginalized and oppressed. The late activist was nominated as a member of the ongoing national conference but declined the offer, arguing that the conference was designed to achieve nothing. Bamidili Aturu came to prominence as a fighter against power abusers when, as a member of the National Youth Service Corps, he refused to shake the hand of the then military administrator of Niger State, Lawang Guadabe, in 1988, stating that the military had caused great havoc to the democratic aspirations of Nigerians. Many described him as an honest and intelligent lawyer who gave his all for the oppressed. Others say he would be greatly missed for his fighting spirit. It's unfortunate, it has left many of us with heavy hearts. He was a liberator, a freedom fighter. He understood his debt to the society as a legal practitioner. And uh, he did his best. He did what 10 lawyers could not do in, in his own time. I can say about Bamidele is his word is his bond. If he tells you good morning, you know it is good morning. And if he tells you good night, you know it is good night. And it's somebody you can be rest assured that if he says he's with you on a matter, you don't have to look back to confirm that Bamdele is with you. If he disagrees with you and he says, please don't count me into this matter, into an issue, please do not count me because he will not be there. But if he tells you he will be there on an issue, he will always be there. And very, very hard to swallow. Uh, he's a humanist, a wonderful human being, very, very humble, God fearing. And I remember he's a comrade. A very good man. That's all I can say. It's everything about him is good. He was selfless. He was uh, frank. He was honest. And he was a good lawyer. Very, very honest advocate for the oppressed, the downtrodden. He meant so many things to so many people. Uh, but I think. The totality, the summation of it is that uh, we are dealing or that we have lost a man of great character, great conscience, depth, a man of conviction. The late Aturu died on the 9th of July at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital after a brief illness. And that's all for this hour. Do join us again top of the hour for more. Thank you for watching. I am Ebulomo Adikuli.